Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Uh, hi, my name is Max Schwimmer. I'm the communications coordinator at Congregational Congregation Beth Israel in West Hartford, and um, I'm here today to talk um, about the upcoming organ concert on Sunday, October 30th as well as um, two subsequent concerts this, um, this season. Uh, it's a brand new concert series, and um, I'm excited to talk to some of the people involved in it today. Um, on my left, we have um, Dr. Ezekiel Menendez, who's the director of music for the Archdiocese of Hartford and the organist at the Cathedral of St. Joseph in Hartford. Um, Natasha Ulyanovsky, is the music director at Congregation Beth Israel. And Jim and Diane Friedman are here, um, two of our members at Congregation Beth Israel and members of the organizing committee that put together these concerts. So I wanted to ask um, Jim and Diane first if you could tell us a little bit about how this series um, came about. Yes, um, the, the organ has been uh, an instrument in uh, Jewish synagogues for a long time, and especially in Reform synagogues. When uh, Congregation Beth Israel moved from what is now the um, Charter Oak Cultural Center in downtown Hartford to our current location um, in 1936, an organ was built and installed by the uh, Austin Organ Factory. Um, and paid for by our sisterhood, um, and uh, has been a part of the congregational life uh, for all these years. It's sad to say that the interest in the organ has diminished um, in uh, synagogues, replaced in part by pianos and guitars. There are some of us who love the sound of the the majestic, glorious sound of, uh, of the organ. And Diane and I, Diane's a former um, professional musician and organist. Diane and I, along with, with um, Arnold Chase and Bern Costo, and with uh, support and guidance and direction from Natasha, we put uh, an organ series together. I've been very much involved in a larger organization called the Connecticut Council for Interreligious Understanding. I've been in many churches, have heard organists, know that there are marvelous musicians, and so we thought, let's reach out and bring them to Congregation Beth Israel for the larger community. And in turn, it would bring, um, hopefully, uh, many people from the larger community into the synagogue probably have never been in our synagogue. I've talked to many people who've driven by uh, that domed building uh, for 15, 20, 25, 30 years, 40 years. What's in there? Well, we want to show them and let them hear uh, what's in there. So that's sort of the origin of this. Yeah, and um, Natasha, we were talking a little bit earlier about how um, we don't normally think of the organ as a Jewish instrument. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about um, how the organ came to be in the synagogue when that started? Uh, yes, it was a big surprise for me when I started to investigate the history of the organ in the synagogue. I found a book by Tina Truhauf, who teaches at Brooklyn College and Columbia University. She wrote a book about uh, organ in reform synagogue and organ in ancient synagogue. And there are some facts which shows um, 
the evidence of presence of the portative organ, not big as big as today, in ancient synagogue, even several centuries before Christ. Uh, some lamps were oil lamps were found in Babylonia, which depicts the organist holding the organ in the hands, or the group of musicians in ancient temple. One would play triangle, one would play portative organ, another would would uh, play uh, like a long pipe. Mm -hmm. So the organ was popular in Ki King David's kingdom and he had the whole orchestra also, but uh, it became forbidden after the fall of the second temple because it was a sign of mourning of Jewish people. They didn't have any instrumental music at the temple after 60s, um, after Christ was, was born. So, and it was silent until 18, 1850. It came to the Reform Temple in Germany first. And so we are glad the organ is played today in temples. Unfortunately, not too often. Uh, I remember playing services for Friday nights, like three, four years ago, still almost every Friday, but now just piano. Or, or a band, just a small band is playing. This is why it is so exciting to continue <laughs> um, teaching, educating about organ, and just presenting this concert series. Yeah, and, and what's special about um, our organ at Congregation Beth Israel? Oh, our organ uh, was named Historic Organ by National uh, Organ Historic Society. Wow. And we were given citation plug in 2006 because it is a rare combination of classical organ with great diapason chorus, and uh, also it incorporates some theater organ instruments. So it was kind of time of the transition from mm. theater organs to the mix mm. of mix organ, which could play any kind of music. So we have some uh, stops imitating sea wave or the sound of shofar, um, or some uh, harps, harp, celeste. So it is quite unique. It gives us a possibility to play symphonic transcriptions on the organ, not only original compositions. And, and I think it is rare. I don't know any, any of these kind of instruments around. There are some great organs in churches which have a gothic sound. Or, mm. or, and also this organ has beautiful romantic sound, mm -hmm. which, uh, I think especially for music of uh, French and German romantics. And um, Ezekiel, maybe you can tell us about the program that you've put together um, to play on our organ on Sunday, October 30th. Yes, um, I was born in Argentina and went to a conservatory of music that was founded by a famous um, composer by the name of Alberto Ginastera. So the first piece in the program is uh, uh, Toccata by Ginastera. And then I played two, tran two transcriptions, as Natasha said. I just went to the temple for, for my first time uh, 10 minutes ago. Uh -huh. And please, uh, I invite the community because it's an amazing place. The organ is beautiful and the, uh, the temple is glorious. I am ashamed that I live in Connecticut for 20 years and then work uh, one mile away from the temple and had never been there. And I thank you for inviting me to uh, play this uh, recital. Anyway, the second two pieces are uh, transcriptions. Uh, they're originally for a uh, quintet by Astor Piazzolla, another Argentinian composer. Um, it's wonderful music, usually playing the bandonion, an instrument that is it's like an organ because uh, produces the sound with air, but, and, and it was created to play uh, in, in processions, no? um, and then became a tango instrument. So these two tangos, or kind of um, uh, tango jazz Gershwin music that Astor Piazzolla created is wonderful. So two, are, two Argentinian composers at the beginning, Ginastera and Piazzolla, and then uh, Felix Mendelssohn, uh, Sonata Number no. 4, uh, I thought it was appropriate to play Mendelssohn since Mendelssohn was Jewish until he uh, moved to, his family moved to Germany and um, they became Christian because of persecution. Um, the music of Mendelssohn in that beautiful instrument as we tried this morning, it sounds very beautiful. So 
Um, I, I am glad I chose the pieces I, I did for mm -hmm. the program. And we have um, a, a number of concerts lined up that um, have equally as diverse programs. So um, on November 20th, the next concert is um, featuring Music of the Heavens with Scott Lamlin from St. John's Episcopal in West Hartford and Susan Carroll from Asylum Hill Congregational. And then our December concert on December 18th is a holiday spectacular. Um, and our own Natasha Ulyanovsky will um, be joined by uh, Krista Rakic of um, St. Mark's Catholic Church. Um, and you can learn more about our organ concerts on our website, um, cbict.org. Um, and um, we just have a couple minutes left, so um, maybe Ezekiel, um, you could tell us um, how you got started playing on the organ. Oh, it's, um, <laughs> uh, so I was in, in this town called La Plata, near Buenos Aires, uh, mm -hmm. in Argentina, and I was a um, conservatory of music piano student. And um, maybe had been studying the piano for three or four years, and um, I was in my class, and uh, the director of the school, the, the principal of the school, came to the class and said, oh, we have to close the organ department. We have no students. Anybody would like to try? And I had no idea what an organ was. <laughs> uh, but I said, OK, I will try, um, because otherwise this, the, the department will close. And so you saved the department. <laughs> 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 Several of us, including my sister, actually, yeah. uh, we, yeah. we were five or six students that tried, and I survived. <laughs> and I actually became, um, I like it a lot. And uh, for many, many years, I didn't play a pipe organ. I just played an electronic organ. Yeah. And then I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to come to the United States to study at Yale University. Wow, that's great. Um, Do you play a jazz organ, too? Yeah, if Hammond, I Hammond, jazz yes. organ. Yeah. <laughs> we had a Hammond. At Jimmy school. Smith. <laughs> yes. You play Smith. Jimmy Smith blues. <laughs> blues, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. You can do a lot um, with the organ, as Natasha was saying, because there's so many sound possibilities. Um, it's such an evocative instrument, and really works in so and many styles. We even played with you, Max. Yeah. Max played saxophone. I so did. we did. Uh, the Devil's Rug by Jean Matitia, mm -hmm. Ragtime. Some ragtime music. Uh, yeah. We did some jazz music on with this instrument, too. And yes, that, so that, that combination even brought out some of our congregants who That's ordinarily uh, yeah, don't like want to, to hear <laughs> of the organ, but right. the uh, it was, yes, was right. wonderful. Right. Um, so again, our um, upcoming organ concert is um, October 30th at 3 o'clock at Congregation Beth Israel. 701 Farmington Avenue in West Hartford. Um, we also have concerts on November 20th and December 18th. We hope you'll uh, join us um, for those. Um, more information is available on our website, um, cbict.org. You can um, find out how to get tickets. And um, thank you to um, Ezekiel Menendez, Natasha Olinovsky, Jim and Diane Friedman for um, joining us to talk about the oh, You're very welcome. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> I think it's important to know that there will be a, a battle of the organists. Right. It is before the Halloween, and battles between the organists are better than military battles between countries. Uh. So <laughs> come, come to the program, please. Yes, we hope to see you at this musical battle of the organists. <laughs>